Are you curious about how to retain your employees during the pandemic and also write a smaller check to the government? Welcome to the first episode of Away With Taxation. Welcome, my name is Rebecca Shepard. I'm here with Peter Huckaba. We are both tax controversy attorneys at Frost Law. We've been practicing in this area for more than a decade and we have been helping individuals and businesses against the IRS, against state governments and other entities. The employee retention credit is a credit for employers for you, a percentage against qualified wages paid to employees. So if you paid your employees $10,000 in 2020, you get up to a 50% credit, up to $5,000 per employee. For 2021, it's up to, 10, up to 70% of $10,000 per quarter. So that could be up to $28,000 per employee if you're qualified for the whole year. The employee retention credit, you qualify by either having a government shutdown or partial shutdown or a decrease in revenue. For 2020, that decrease in revenue is 50% quarter over quarter. And for 2021, it's only 20% quarter over quarter. So a lot of professionals were not aware that you're able to take both Paycheck Protection Program forgiveness as well as the employee retention credit on the same employee for the same quarter, as long as you aren't double dipping on the wages. For example, if somebody earns $100,000 for tax year 2021 and the employer is eligible for the employee retention credit for first quarter, you're able to designate $15,000 towards PPP forgiveness and then $10,000 towards the employee retention credit, giving you an additional $7,000 in refundable credits. Substantiation is required uh, in this situation and you need to retain evidence of partial or full shutdown. You need to retain evidence of qualified wages paid and you need to retain evidence of the gross receipts deduction if that's how you're qualifying for this credit. One important thing to keep in mind is that the IRS has also expanded the assessment statute in this specific circumstance from three years to five years. Retain these documents longer than you may normally do. The assessment statute is in effect saying that the IRS can come in and audit you for a period of time. Typically, that's three years, but they've made a special exception here and it's now five years for this. We're really interested to see how the IRS takes this issue and, and moves forward with it. What, what should they do? First step. First understand, have you applied for forgiveness or have you not applied for forgiveness? You need to understand uh, what your payroll costs are during the covered period and what your non-payroll costs have been because you're going to be looking to try to maximize your non-payroll costs to be able to potentially apply some of the payroll costs to qualified wages. Peter, everything sounds pretty amazing. What's, uh, what's the catch? Is there a catch? Sure, so there's, there's a little bit of a catch. Um, Section 280C the Internal Revenue Code addresses how we deal with credits in these situations and the tax effect of employee retention credit is to reduce wages paid uh, by the amount of the credit. Thanks so much for tuning in. We really appreciate you taking the time. If we can help you in any way, we'd be more than happy to. Please see the link below to, to reach us directly. And if you enjoyed it, we, we would appreciate the thumbs up or if you want to comment, let us know what we could do better next time. We'd appreciate it. Thanks so much.